The last part of section 5.6 talks about what is called the discriminant. And discriminant is an important part of the quadratic formula. And if we remember from the last video, our quadratic functions are in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And one method, the method that always works to solve any quadratic function is the quadratic formula. But the discriminant the discriminant is a part of the quadratic formula. And I'm going to write it out for you. If you remember the quadratic formula, is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of a bunch of stuff divided by 2a. Well, that bunch of stuff that I'm going to write in green, b squared, minus 4 times a times c. That's the part of the quadratic formula that's called the discriminant. This piece right here in the parentheses. Its purpose, its purpose, it tells how many solutions there are to your quadratic function. That's its main purpose. It will tell you how many. Most importantly, it does not tell you the answers. To your problem it does not tell you the answers it only tells you how many now if you recall there are three cases case number one is where your quadratic function makes a parabola and it touches the x-axis in two spots how does the discriminant work well if that discriminant, which was b squared minus 4 times a times c, is a number that is greater than 0, then you will have two solutions to the problem. And what type are they? They will be two real numbers. And we talked about real numbers in Unit 1. Real numbers are anything that you know or can name. The second case. was where your quadratic equation or parabola touches in only one spot. In that case, the discriminant value, b squared minus 4ac, will be equal to 0. In that case, there is only one solution, and it is real. The last case would be if your quadratic graph does not touch the x-axis. If that was the case, then the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is going to be a number less than 0. And if you recall, and I'm going to write right here just for a second, the, the quadratic formula is this. Oops. Minus... Uh, I gotta erase that. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, if the part that I circle in red is a number less than 0, that becomes negative. Well, what's the square root of a negative number? The square root of any negative number that doesn't work out as far as we know. It doesn't produce a real number. However, what it does produce is something I talked about earlier this year, how you're going to see a number system you've never seen before. If b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, you're going to have two imaginary or what can also be called complex 
solutions, which we'll get into in section 5.5 and 5.9. This is the special case. This is where you get imaginary numbers from. But that is how the discriminant works. B squared minus 4AC tells you how many solutions there are to your problem. Now, let's try a couple of examples. Number one, and the goal is to find the number of solutions and what type they are. So, our first problem, x squared minus 6x equals negative 7. Well, i got to make it equal to 0. Got to always make it equal to 0 first. So I get x squared minus 6x plus 7 equals 0. And our discriminant tells us how many solutions there are. So what I need to do is I need to evaluate b squared minus 4ac. So i got to plug my numbers in. Well, a is equal to 1, right there. B is equal to negative 6, and C is equal to 7. So I'm just going to plug my numbers in, and I'm going to put them in parentheses. Negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 7. Well, if I evaluate this, I get 36 minus 28, and basically I get B squared minus 4AC is equal to the number 8. Well, I'm going to go back one slide. 8. The answer is greater than zero. I'm right here. So therefore, I know I have two solutions that are real. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to write that down. I'm going to have two real solutions to this problem right here in the red circle. I don't know what they are, but I do know I will have two of them. Well, let's try the last one. Of course, I've got to make it equal to 0, so I'm going to add 11 to both sides. And I'll get x squared minus 6x plus 11 equals to 0. Okay, well, i got to figure out the discriminant again. It will tell me, are there solutions that I can find to this problem? Well, in this case, a is 1, b is negative 6, and this time C is 11. So if I evaluate my discriminant, B squared minus 4AC, I'm going to get negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 11, which becomes 36 minus 44, which equals negative 8. So therefore, my discriminant, B squared minus 4AC, is equal to negative 8, and if I go back to my prior slide, it's a negative. My b squared minus 4ac is less than 0 because it's a negative number, which means I have two imaginary answers to this particular problem. So if I was to solve this problem in green, I will have two complex or imaginary solutions. And people, that is how you use the discriminant and how it helps you determine how many solutions you have to any quadratic function.